<laughs> All right. Welcome, 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 welcome. This is another awesome lesson from one of my favorite online guitar instructors, Corey Congilio. He is a true fire extraordinaire, I would I would say. I, I, I've attained a library. You, you have. I and go in there with a pipe and it's, a smoking jacket. <laughs> smoking jacket. No, a library, of course. Martini, baby. Come yeah, on. Right. No, but... Some of the best, like I was saying in my other lesson, if you haven't seen that, he did a really great way, uh, lesson on how to expand your, your blues uh, rhythm vocabulary. Right. But um, his courses are really, really good. If you're if you're 145, I mean, he's really good at playing a lot of things, but I've found, for me personally, as somebody that can really get into how to make something that can be kind of difficult to explain and to digest because you start getting into elements of jazz, mm -hmm. make it really easy to understand. So check out his stuff. It's Awesome. But anyways, today, he's got some wicked chops. I remember watching a lot of his videos, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, he's freaking really good. And then all of a sudden, you posted like an Instagram thing, and I'm like, hold the boat. This is a whole <laughs> different Corey than, I, than I've ever seen online. So um, you mix a lot of major and minor pentatonic, which is great, but you're really good at putting um, arpeggio stuff in there as well. I mean, those things are the basis for... 90, 95% right? of my playing. Yeah, because, yeah, Because, yeah. uh, you know, in addition to being a blues player, I'm actually more of like sort of a, a songwriting side yeah. man. Which you know? is, we need a lot more of this. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, is like it's my job to make them sound good. And, right. I, and I notice that or add to what they already do. And so much of that stuff just really works, whether I'm called on to be the Dickie Betts to the Dwayne Allman yeah. or if I'm called on to be the Joe Bonamassa to the Beth Hart, yep. you know what I mean? Like, I have to be able to turn those switches on. And I called, I think a scale is kind of like a switchboard. Like, yeah. what sound do you want? I always yeah. say, what sound do you want? Uh -huh. Do you want Allman Brothers? Do you want Stevie Ray Vaughan? Yeah. Do you want Hendrix? Yeah. Do you want uh, Major Hendrix? Right. You know what I mean? Right, all right. those things are different. Yeah, and, they're, yeah. and they're like little colors that you can start to paint with. Yeah. And they're all within one fret of each other. Isn't that crazy? It, it's, it's, my job over the years have been to like unveil yeah. those things and get behind the curtain and say it's not that hard. No, it's not. It's not. Right? It's just. Uh, just I mean, even watching you kind of explain what you were gonna, what, what we talked about a little bit beforehand, I was like, right? Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. like like it's like it's, yeah. like to me, the, my my pivotal moment was when I learned the cage system. Mm -hmm. But like, there's there's you know twenty of those things on guitar that are like those pivotal like really all right. this time I'm like thinking and what's, about, what's like, funny is it's like our brains all work differently yeah like cage doesn't work for me yeah. so much but the way that i do it does yeah and, and just so happens that i've learned how to explain what i do just sure. like you've learned yeah how to explain how caged yeah. works for yeah. you yeah done this a couple yeah. times right exactly yeah <laughs> and okay yeah, so yeah, so let me see it so we got um how do you think do you think um more from a minor context like minor boxes and then you add everything into it like that's what i do when i mix major and minor well, well here's what i uh, i'll I didn't think about this until right this moment, yeah. but my first guitar teacher ever taught me all five patterns of the pentatonic, yeah. right? of the right. minor pentatonic. Sure. And then, so when he did that, right, we all, we all, yep. most of us know that, right? And then he said, well, then you can add in this other note. And in the diagram, he didn't even say it was the flat five or the blue yeah. note. He put an X. Yeah. So in the diagram, it was a bit note. But he didn't, the good thing about it is he didn't try to confuse me with a bunch of terms. Mm -hmm. Pentatonic, blues scale, rock scale, yeah. bebop scale. Right. Because all of that is like going through like a, uh, you, know, um, you, you know, some kind of file folder. Yeah. Trying to find the right thing yeah. or the right thing. And it's just your ear can kind of yep. push you in that direction. Yep. So once you have that, then you have a lot, you have a lot there, right? Yep. A lot of rock and roll, yep, a lot of blues. Sure. Okay. But then you have major pentatonic. had noticed they're all within a half step of each other yeah. you know so i like to go oh know. right right like as a way to, to learn yeah. it together right yeah. exactly so when you first start doing this um what you would uh, an easy way to think about it is if you're in position one of minor right the position two of major will be inside exactly, that, right? exactly. And so yep. it's just up one. If you know the five shapes, right. you're gold. Because what you can also do is, here's what I used to do when I would teach somebody how to find a major. I would say, there's your minor, right? Yeah. 
Now just start your pinky on the A and go. Oh, that's great. Oh, right. Now you're F sharp minor. Right. A major. That's a great. You know. Yeah. You know. <laughs> that's a good one. I like that. Yeah. Yours. You can take that. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. No, I certainly didn't. I certainly didn't develop it. Right. So, but what? Ha so then here's where guitar players get confused. Okay. Because you can also think of it this way, which right. I don't. Yeah. Minor. Minor. Right. Right. Uh huh. You start to add in the B. That's a nine. The F sharp. That's the thirteen. Sure. And then people are like, well, "When do I add the thirteen? And yeah, when do right. I add the nine? When you tell you to exactly. But they get too confused with yeah. that because they don't. They, what happens is when you have too many options, yeah. you, it paralyzes. Yeah. You well, and you know what I what what helps a lot too is. You know, if you're doing a chord that right. has that note in it, yep. that's a good time to do it. Exactly. <laughs> or if you think about Chuck Berry. Yeah. Yeah. I guarantee he wasn't thinking about it. He was just... But he's grabbing that. Yeah. He's grabbing that 13. He's yeah. grabbing, you know... You are like an encyclopedia of... Like, okay, do, do, what, what would B.B. King do? Yeah, he would go... Okay, what, what about Stevie Ray Vaughan? What yeah. would he do? Albert Collins? Uh, um, he, oh, perfect. Um, or he does this one thing where he goes. I can't do it right. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Where he just How does, does the octaves. Do oh, that octaves. Is so good. You know, uh, Albert King would be. I'm telling you, he is a freaking encyclopedia of blues guitar players. Which well, is here's the thing, why and, and awesome. we can we this can go yeah. and go and go and go. I did a country thing for Premier Guitar one time, yeah. where they said they called it Working Man's Blues. Yeah. And I was like, you're a blues player. Yeah. How do you want to play country? And yeah. I don't want to take this in that direction yeah. right now. But if you take BB King, right. right, but you go, it's the same spot. Yeah, yeah. Same notes too. Yeah. Right? But it's you know we want the neck pickup. Yeah, we want. Yeah, oh, it's the same so spot. It's just funny. approach. It's just yeah. tone. It's just attack. It's all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, wait, wait. So, um, give me, give them uh, just a straight ahead without the arpeggio. What a good example of mixing major and minor would sure. be. Sure. So one of the things that people love to do is if you have like, let's say you're doing like a T-bone Walker shuffle, like, like a one, two, three, yeah. that kind of feel. Mm -hmm. So if you have a nine chord, now you already have some more sophisticated sound, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. Because you don't just have a seven. So that's over the one chord, go for the major sound. Minor. Yeah, over the fourth. Yeah. yeah. So that kind of idea. Yeah. You know, um, Want that sweeter sound? Yeah. You go for that major. You know, if, if you're playing like, um, what's really funny is I used to play in a swing band. Yeah. And they'd be like, one, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah. And then of course you want to go, you know. Yeah, right. But I had a saxophone player say to me once, "What if you just did this? One, two, I want two, three, four. And you went. Yeah. Sounds better. <laughs> you know, and it's, yeah, just, yeah. it's just the little stuff, but it's the right, the right. Note yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, and that's another thing is is listen to other instruments because they they some of the guys like horn players are incredible blues phrasing or of piano course. players yeah. just ripping yeah and you can start to develop your ear that way right hearing those other notes because they're so fluid and good at it whereas right is i think a lot of times if for some reason since guitars are a native instrument it seems like we should pick up on what those sound like but it's easier for me to listen to other instruments that, oh that right that's yeah. where that sound sure. is coming in right sure but um okay so you blues uh major over the one Minor over the four. Yeah. Over the five. You just throw the bow out there. What, what's up? I just kind of, I just kind of go where my ear tells me. Lots of times I'll play, you know, I'll play more major, you mm -hmm. know, and then minor over Back the four again. Minor. Okay. You know, but you know, everybody does. 
that kind of lick. Mm -hmm. That's the perfect major minor combination. Yep, it really is. Yep. You know, you, you can. I found if you if it, to the one of the things that breaks through to a lot of people is just take if because everybody knows the minor pentatonic. Sure. Just put the major third. That's a good place to start. And you know, you know. it's it's that one. Exactly. Yep. That's right. You know, right. and it's like, oh. Well, okay. and then that's that teach of teach them to catch the so catch yeah. the fish first, have fun, that's your sound. Yeah. But then start to really yeah. understand where they came from. Well, and then the next level of that was is when you start to add the arpeggios in. And that's right. Like, and that's where the notes of obviously the chord mm -hmm. uh, are are pronounced, but it's really all those notes are in both of those overlapping shapes. Yep. Because if you have Seven there. Right. So they're all there, you know, so it's A, C sharp, E, G, A, C sharp. Mm -hmm. So that's that makes you sound even more sophisticated. Yeah. So if you're no, I'll yeah, one, two, three, four. Get them two arpeggio shapes that you could use, like for each chord. Like so, okay, if you so were just literally gonna play, just to get it in your brain. Like with most, yeah, you know, players that are in an inter intermediate situation. Yeah, and and you probably encounter this too. Somebody says, "Well, I'm playing this." Yeah, it doesn't sound like a solo. Yeah, I don't exactly. know why I'm using yeah. all the right notes. Right, right, right. But you don't have any phrasing, and you don't have any right. like context or yeah. sentence building or anything like that. So the full A7 arpeggio is. Okay. All right. But you would never just play that, right? No. So I like to take the first sort of this, well, the higher octave of it, which would be. Okay. Because that fits sort of into what we know already. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And then how and would you move that to the to the four chord? Yeah. So then you want you want to try this one. There it is. Sorry. Okay. Because then there lands on a C, which yeah. is right inside yeah. the monotonic uh -huh. scale. Do that yeah, real, real slow. Real so if you have D, F sharp, G, A, sorry, D, F sharp, A, C, D, F sharp, A, C. Okay. But of course it's all here. Mm -hmm. See all those notes? So they all yeah. live together. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, which, is, which is really great. So what you can do then is if you're that that player that we talked about in another video that said I just want to play by myself. Mm -hmm. Now you can outline chords. Yeah. And you're... Right. And then we get fancy to diminished. Mm -hmm. So I, I figured out. Okay, our next lesson we need to. Is all that stuff. We need, we need to do that. Yeah, because no. then you're getting into the jazz blues, which, yep. is the, which is like the one six two five yeah. stuff, and that sort of thing. That's further down the road yeah. for, for most of us. But what we know. can do is we'll have you write out like a mellow, a time through the progression. Yeah. Using real basic soloing. Yeah. Concepts. That's just like arpeggiating through the solo. But yeah. It's a real. It's kind of like saying, um, okay, here's the sentences you need to learn to pass yeah. the course. Right. right. Now, once you've gotten to the second stage of the class, make it, make any sentence you want. Yeah. Because then you can just say, so play a rhythm for me if you okay. can, and I'll make it. I'll break them real down, really sparse. Yeah. You know, okay. it's like one, two, three, four. <laughs> Play 
now you haven't played a lick at all, right? You haven't played any of your Stevie. That's all the stuff you work on. Arpeggio. You know. Arpeggio. So the whole thing is, is you know, you practice right. you, all these licks. You know, everybody's gonna go, you know, yeah, or right. Save that. Yeah. So it's really the the height of the solo. Yeah. Once you're doing your third pass yeah. around, now you're. Uh, yeah. Now you're really hitting the listener with something like, oh, that's really great. Yeah. That's really super badass because mm -hmm. he's playing something I remember, and it sounds like Angus or Stevie Ray or Jimmy or whatever. Right. Yeah. Right. Can't wait. This is going to be a long, a long road we're going down with Corey. It's going to be awesome. Okay, so Corey's got a lot of awesome stuff on his sites. He's got, you know, Instagrams, all that stuff. His True Fire courses. Yep. I'll put it in the description box below. Make sure to check it out. Also, like I said, I'm going to be going back out to Nashville and spending more time with Corey. So let us know in the comment section below things that you would like to see highlighted. Would love to see that. That'd Thank you so much for joining awesome. us. Thank you, Corey. You got it, my friend. Catch you next time.